Uh, but welcome back to another fantastic episode. Today, we are going to have on a very special guest, my friend Jason Talley from uh, Clear Choice Tax and Lean Service, which is our lean search company. So we're going to talk a little bit about the services they provide, the impact of COVID-19, and uh, a couple other things here. So Jason, welcome to the show today. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So tell me a little bit about how, uh, well, first let's talk about Clear Choice. Who is Clear Choice? Clear Choice is a 2004 established company I founded myself. Um, I was working in the title industry right around that time. It became apparent that we needed to have a, a third party vendor. Uh, the attorney that I was working for, Walter Blake, helped set me up a corporation and I started providing our own lean searches internally and to some of the companies that were surrounding us in the Coral Springs area uh, that blossomed really fast as there was a huge need for lean search and nobody was really doing it. So by uh, July, which was only a few months after we opened up the company, I, I split ways with the attorney and uh, opened up my first office. And since there, we've just been growing every single year ever since doing uh, majority of what we do is municipal lean search. We also do HOA estoppel letters and a couple other ancillary services, which help get the closings uh, happening for you guys. Awesome. Well, we thank you. So for those of you that are watching, you can do live comments. Please share the video, like it, uh, leave us some comments. We'll try and get to as many live comments as we can. Uh, but Clear Choice is our go-to lean search company. You know, they handle a lot of our third-party vendor services that we order uh, in our industry. You can see here on the, on the website, uh, you know, we, we utilize them for a lot of our closings. And one of the things I wanted to talk about, we're going to get to the big thing about how the impact of COVID-19 is affecting uh, our industry and what that means for both of our services. Uh, but what I wanted to do is just kind of do a little bit of a, a take you back a little bit to talk about the difference between a uh, title search and a lean search. So I'm going to talk about title search. You'll talk about lean search. Uh, and, and what the mysterious thing that people realize is I'm not sure why they call Jason's product a lean search when it doesn't check for leans. It checks for uh, items that could, I guess, potentially be leaned uh, in the future and where a title search searches for leans. So from a title search, we're going to be checking the public record for anything that's recorded against the legal description. It could be a lien, a judgment, foreclosures, bankruptcies, uh, HOA issues, uh, anything, mortgage, open mortgages, divorce agreements, you know, things that would actually be recorded in the public record. Uh, and, and that's called the title search. So we're checking the root of title. And then when we flip over to Jason, we order what's called a lean search. And something to remember is the products and services that Jason provides to a title company have nothing to do with title insurance. We could close a deal without his products or services. So Jason, give them a little bit of an idea about what type of items you search when we talk about uh, liens that aren't actually liens. Absolutely. Uh, uh, some of the huge things that started off the industry would be the open permit searches, which obviously has never been a title issue. You can have an open permit on your house and have that not affect title or be something that a buyer or seller, anybody can go back against the title insurance policy. But it's a huge part of what we do at Clear Choice. It's, uh, there are a good amount of files over 30% that are going to have issues that involve either some type of a code or an open permit issue. Um, the idea being there is that you're buying a house that has an open permit for a roof that's never been inspected. And the perceived value of a brand new roof of $25,000 that's uh, been done improperly and actually might need to be torn down is a huge detriment to the buyer coming into a property. Um, code enforcement violations, overgrown yards, you know, things that were dumped on the, on the sidewalks, trailer parks that were uh, put in the wrong spot, things like that that are going to be violated can actually turn into a lien. It does take a fair amount of time, but you would then pull that lien in public record. And then what we would be doing as part of our lien search is actually getting you guys the payoff for that city located lien. So city of Coral Springs, city of Parkland would lien, place that in public record. And then our lien search would in additional um, to finding what's going on with the property would also give a payoff for those lien items. So there's a little bit of crossover there, but uh, mostly unrecorded items that could potentially become a lien is what we're looking at. And it could potentially become a lien for those viewers that are watching out here and know that these lien search matters are, are not covered by title insurance. They typically do need to be uncovered within the inspection period in that new contract we talked about, which isn't really new anymore, but it does, explain in the contract that a lot of these items need to be uncovered uh, within that inspection period, which is why a lot of the attorneys drafted language that talks about excluding 
uh, the, the services that you're searching for, excluding them from the standard inspection period and making them the seller's responsibility to remedy at their cost, uh, obviously prior to closing. Uh, so it's very, very important for the people that are watching to understand the difference between a title search and a lien search and what is actually searched for in the services that you're offering. Let's flip to the association. Uh, we've had a few files where we have gotten underwriting approval to uh, close without what's called an estoppel certificate from the homeowners association. Uh, obviously that's separate from if the homeowners association requires an approval, uh, but due to COVID-19, that is one of the caveats we did get permission to be able to close uh, without an estoppel, but tell the viewers a little bit, what is an estoppel? What do you order it for? What shows on it? Uh, it's going to be another item that's going to come up that, you know, people need to make sure that they have paid. Uh, there could be special assessments placed against properties for the HOA issues, which is going to be the maintenance fees and any of the updates. If there's, um, you know, a general insurance policy and something happens like a hurricane and the roofs need to be replaced, and that's going to be assessed as a special assessment. So once again, coming in to protect yourself as a buyer, finding out that the property that you're taking over, which has dues that attach to the property, uh, is always great to know. You want to know that they're not in arrears. Uh, it, it can also potentially show the financial position of the HOA company um, and any type of uh, overages that they've been collecting to put towards things um, like future paint jobs on, depending on the type of units, townhomes versus just a regular you know, single family home, homeowners association. But those types of issues are going to pop up and then, you know, you're going to be taking over a property that may or may not have those amounts due and then you would get stuck paying them. So once again, we're finding things out that are gonna make you more whole as a buyer and what you're paying for is what you get when we do these types of searches. Also remember at Independence Title, we're on top of our game. So we've been strategizing uh, even prior to COVID-19 on, on a lot of the things like online remote notarization and e-recording we've been doing since 2013. Um, so a lot of these things that, that are up and coming because of COVID-19, we've already been doing, and, and one of the new things that we've talked about, and it's how to navigate the strategy of being able to close a deal without a lien search or an estoppel due to the reason which we're gonna talk about next, which is everyone's on lockdown. So if everyone's on lockdown, what do we do if nobody's working and nobody can provide the services? Now, don't get scared for those of you that are watching. Most municipalities are still open. They're just closed to the public like we are at the office. We had an attorney actually call us today and said he's coming in with his um, seller to close the deal. And we're like, no, you're not. He's like, yes, I am. I'm driving from Miami. I'm like, even more of a reason you're not coming in. You know, I said, have you watched the cases in Miami? We're almost at 10,000. I said, unfortunately, our office is closed to the public due to the safety and well-being of our staff. We want to make sure they can stay as safe as possible and as healthy as possible. You, I'll be happy to put up a folding table outside to uh, do the closing should you wish, but nobody's entering our office. So that goes to the next topic we're going to talk about a little bit is what if the municipality is closing? What are you seeing as far as are they closed? Are they not closed? Maybe kind of a little bit of a percentage of, of what you're seeing with the, the scare in the market when it comes to not, because a lot of title companies will say, if we can't get a lien search or an estoppel, we're not closing, where we're a little bit more on the forefront of it. And we look at the risk and, and, and look at the deal to see, does it make sense? Is it something we can close or not? Um, but what are you seeing out there? How COVID-19 is affecting maybe some of these uh, cities and counties? Yeah, we've had uh, everything across the board. We've got where there's one department within a city that's not going to be providing results as to, you know, that's just how they operate their business. Or maybe they're more in front of the in front of the general public permitting departments. You know, some people close down and then come back online. Uh, a majority of people like us at Clear Choice, we've moved over 95 percent of our staff onto a remote uh, capability, but we don't have a lot of visitors doing what we do. We're more of a search provider. So we keep a list going. I know, Kevin, you're aware of this, that we've been sending it to you. Uh, we've been doing blast emails with changes. We've got things like Daniel Beach coming on board, and then a week later, they'll come off. So everything's constantly evolving. We're trying to get the best information out there. We have a, a page on our website. Uh, it's the taxandlean.com that you were alluding to earlier in your, in your slide there. Uh, forward slash city closures as things happen there. I update those manually. Um, we also do a blast that's a little bit color coded, red being not open for business. Uh, yellow, they're you know doing things at a slowed pace. Uh, but I think 
most of them at this point have gotten a lot of those issues on their hand and they're, they're capable of working at a little bit of a reduced pace at this time. Awesome. And we have that list every day. It comes into our email. So if anyone has any questions, um, you know, everyone wants to know who's open, who's closed. But if you're not doing a deal in that city, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, but feel free to reach out to us. We do have that uh, daily spreadsheet and, and our email blast that we can send out uh, notifying you of who's open, who's closed for, for those of you that, um, you know, do have questions. You know, as always, don't forget, like and share this video with someone who may who may be in your database, maybe on social media. Uh, so this way you can uh, get it into the hands of someone that that is in our profession. You know, maybe it's even another title company and we can introduce them to Jason and his services, you know, because he's he's our go to person when it comes to doing uh, all of our our lean searches and, and estoppels here uh, in Florida. So uh, one of the things I do want to mention as well, don't forget, we've been getting a, a large amount of people emailing in. You see down below, you can email David at TitleRate.com. Uh, if you'd like to get a free copy of Rescue Your Business, now more than ever, now is the time. I've sat with Jason. I talk to him often. We talk about the PPP loan. Uh, we talk about a lot of the SBA stuff, what's going on in the market, uh, You know, some of the, the challenges that we're seeing in the market. So we consult with each other often. Uh, and now more than ever, you want to pick up a copy of that book. It's a free book. We're happy to mail it out to you. I have the inventory sitting in the office. So if we can get it out to you, uh, it's better to serve you than to sit here and wait one day for it to be sold and someone to buy it. So I'd rather get it in your hands. Uh, but it's all about talking about the challenges that we're running into. So so let's end with that a little bit. I know you have a fantastic marketer that goes out to tons of events. If you follow your, your Instagram and your Facebook, I mean, it's always some live events somewhere on her Instagram stories. Um, we, we probably could have brought her on this to, to talk a little bit about it, but you know, now there's no event. So, so what are you seeing as far as, uh, you know, market conditions, obviously your office, you're fully operational. Yes. We, we all, we're all feeling a little bit of a downturn, a little bit of a cut in, in the standard of what we're used to, but we adjust to that because we're successful entrepreneurs. We, we, you know, we, we adapt to the, uh, ups and downs of the market, but what are you seeing as far as events out there? Cause now obviously there's no more events. What's the new norm? I mean, uh, like everybody else has become aware of these Zoom meetings, you know, people doing after hours cocktails, uh, some of the networking groups that we generally travel in those circles, we, you'll be tons of invites in there to get out and do some type of a Zoom networking. It's obviously not the same as being in front of people. Um, it's driving Christine, our marketing rep, absolutely crazy. She loves to be in front of the people. She's a, a genuine people person and she wants to be out there, you know, she, she cares about people and not being able to see those people and, and get in front of them and, and meet new people and, and just rehash friendships in person with our clientele, which is what she's spectacular at, is uh, it's, it's killing her. She's not a happy camper these days. Yeah, it's tough. You know, no events anymore. And, and you know, people are doing all of these Zoom calls. And, you know, in one sense, I mean, someone like me or you, a Zoom call would probably be great because we can cut out some of the um, the travel time and some of the wasted time you can get on a call with someone that you want to do business with and get to know them a little bit via Zoom. So, uh, you know, it, it could actually be very beneficial to uh, someone like you or me, but definitely for the marketer that's out there and their sole business is building relationships with industry professionals. And, and this is definitely a killer for the market. Um, last thing I want to end on is uh, what what can my viewers do for you? What, what can we do to help you, obviously, besides ordering some lean searches? Um, what are your target? Who are you looking to meet? Because uh, obviously, we have a lot of real estate agents and a lot of investors that should be closing with me. Not sure why you don't. But if you don't close with me, you know, there's definitely an opportunity here. So so tell them a little bit about how they can help you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the people that we want to work with mostly are going to be the real estate attorney, title companies, the Kevins of the world, the people who are on top of their game, you know, are are doing a great business, providing a service for their clients and appreciate um, a lean search company who's going to be really caring about the service end as well as the turnarounds and the final product and an ability to stand behind what we do. I mean, we're accountable for a part of the title search and we do hundreds of these every single day. And so, you know, we're looking for those people who are going to be able to, you know, understand that, you know, how we want to provide the best service possible. We are obviously, like you said, as an entrepreneur, We've shifted our business models. Our biggest problem now is that we do twice a day courier delivery. And sometimes in these cities, you can't give people the checks to get them started on their lean searches. I mean, so, you know, we're adjusting, but definitely the, the people who are doing the deals, the title companies of the world, 
Um, you know, we've been around since I said 2004. I've been doing this, we're constantly getting better. Our turn times up until recently were the best that they've ever been. Obviously a slowdown now based off of some of the things we've talked about with the closures and the departments not being available. But those are the people we wanna, we wanna work with. If, if you're like Kevin and you own your own title company, then call me as well. Awesome, and real estate attorneys, let's be clear. You know, you do a lot of work for real estate attorneys as well. Um, not just title companies, but obviously attorneys that, that do a, a large amount of business are good clients for you. Um, anything else? Any any last words here as we wrap it up? No, I mean, you know, it's, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about what we do. Um, one final thing, a huge thing that we do is over my left shoulder. Uh, all the lien searches that we do, we donate uh, money for the adoption of dogs. Thank goodness with COVID, one of the main things that, uh, I'll pull that up since you're zooming in on me. So we work directly with the Humane Society of Broward County and a portion of every single search goes towards providing those animals with a uh, adoption and we also promote the pets that have been sticking around for a long time people who can't find a home um, kind of our mission haven't been super busy with that lately because everybody wants an animal when they're stuck in their house and, and we've done really well with getting our dogs in place but that's just one of those little things that uh, adds a little bit to what we do makes us happy it's it's my project we're, we're super passionate about it and besides providing lean searches that's just another facet of what clear choice does awesome well I appreciate you taking the time to uh, hop on on the call today in order to, to kind of educate people a little bit about what to look for in the market. You know, we have guests every single day, so look forward to our 3 p.m. Uh, live. We're going to go live with a different guest, hopefully almost every day if we can. Uh, but we have some great people lined up. I believe tomorrow we're going to have on a hard money lender. And, uh, and I think later in the week, we're going to have someone on talking about, uh, I believe, virtual tours on, on homes and stuff. So that's kind of a new thing. So um, you guys are very welcome out there. I see all the comments. You're very, very welcome. I'm glad we can, uh, you know, help get you through these tough challenges. You know, one of the things that I did learn from 2018 is definitely how to better navigate through tough economic times. And we didn't know whether it was going to be the crash of 2020, 2021, or was it going to be a global pandemic that literally just hits you overnight. And uh, now we have to figure out how to change our business model in order to be a little bit more successful. Um, so as I said, if you want to get a copy of the book, email David at titlerate.com. He'll be happy to put a copy in the mail. But Jason, thank you very much. Jason's not only provides our lean searches, he's a neighbor of mine and, uh, and he's a friend of mine. So I thank you for taking the time out of your day. I know you have your daughter doing a little dance, uh, <laughs> dance competition, so you want to get back to that. Uh, but thank you for taking the time to go live with us and uh, make a difference in our community. So I appreciate it. Have a great day, Jason. Stay safe out there. Keep that family safe. And uh, I look forward to seeing you as soon as COVID-19 passes. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me again. You're welcome.